Okay. While we were building and constructing all that on this side, these guys are establishing the same layered anchor system on this side. <clears throat> their top requirement, or their highest requirement, is going to be the track lines. They're gonna build two to one in a series so that they can tension both of those track lines to an appropriate pre-tension. There's several theories and rules about how you pre-tension those, but what you want to avoid is post-tensioning or overloading on your pre-tension. So the maximal rule of thumb is you're not going to use more than a three to one mechanical advantage on either leg of the track lines, and you're never going to pull with more than one person. Those are your real world application, uh, field based applications to try and stay within the right weight parameters. Uh, the other recommendation is that you always use a dynamometer when you're doing track lines because of the type of forces you're dealing with. When you rig in the dynamometer, most of the testing shows that putting that dyno on this center change of direction here for the two to ones is your ideal location for that system. That's going to give you the truest load calculation for what kind of force you're applying to the track lines. Does that make sense? Okay. On your two to one in a series, You've got your knot on one side, you're coming in, you're coming out, you're gonna have safeties here, you're coming in, you're coming out, safeties here, and then back through. This secondary set of safeties is um, moderately negotiable, okay? As long as you've got the primary tandems right there, that's adequate. And then coming off of your two changes or your two mechanical advantage pulleys here, you're gonna have tandem prusiks there as well, which you're gonna to attach to the two track lines. So in theory, each of these legs become extensions of the track lines, tensioning the system, and then setting your safeties. We're gonna rig all those on and go through that in a minute. At a minimum, you wanna use eight mil prusiks for these track lines, and for safety factors and slippage, we use nine mil prusiks, okay? So all the prusiks within this track line system are nine millimeter. You don't ever wanna use anything less than eight. If I understand. On our dyno, um, we use a 10% load application theory based on the slippage. So we don't like to see more than 100 pounds on our dyno prior to loading it, depending on the slag or the sag in the track line and the distance or the expanse that we're trying to cover. If you guys visualize this, obviously the bigger and bigger the expanse gets, the more and more sag you're gonna have and the more rope weight you're gonna have to where it could theoretically get to the point that just simply pulling the rope into a moderate position is gonna put 100 pounds of load on your dyno. Everybody follow that? You do not want a, a bling guitar string tight track line system. You will overload it as soon as you put people on it. All right? <clears throat> all right, we would extend those all the way out to our building edge or our cliff edge, and then we would go ahead and start our tensioning system. You don't want to shorten these because if you think about it, once you start tensioning, because these are attached on as piggybacks, you can't reset these. Does that make sense? So where you start is, is needs to be maximized or needs to be the maximum distance that you can potentially gain and then progress from there. How many guys are allowed to pull on this? One. One. Okay. Now this is the other element we didn't talk about yet um, and this came predominantly from Jim Kovach. You want to make sure that you splice these two spines together on these carabiners so that if you have a failure of one element, the whole system isn't, this leg isn't gonna completely collapse back, allowing the other one to completely play out. Does that make sense? So it's a great safety, safety add-on or safety feature. Go ahead and pull a little bit of tension on there. Now, while these guys are tensioning this, what do you think we're doing on that side? And watching our tension back tie, right? Because that tension back tie off the head of that tripod, if it's too loose, what are we gonna see the head of the tripod immediately want to do? Exactly. Good, so everything's squatting well, everything looks good. Once that's in place, you're gonna set all those safeties. Now, utilizing these in a series, you would say, well, why didn't I just build two separate two-to-ones and all those lines? It allows everything to, in theory, be equally tensioned. So you're equally tensioning both track lines because they're working off of the same two-to-ones. Does that make sense? Okay. Whoever is in charge on this side or functioning as a safety officer is constantly keeping an eye 
on these prussic elements. What are these gonna do when we start to overload the system? Slip. And when they slip, they make noise, they kind of talk to you and they're gonna heat glaze. So you're gonna get some slippage. This is all gonna start to fuse these fibers and you're gonna start to see an indication that things are moving, okay? It's not a bad practice to just quickly mark your rope with a marker or something along those lines that's not gonna be damaging or compromise the integrity of the rope. Give yourselves a little marking indicator of where these prusiks are when they're set and loaded. That way, if you do start to see some slippage, you'll immediately see a gap between that mark and the barrel knots of your prusiks. So. All right, we wanna take these tails with a small margin of slack. We wanna come back to this rigging plate. We wanna put midline knots in these and kill them at the rigging plate. That way we have an additional redundant safety so that when those prusiks do slip, if we overload, this is gonna tension them so we don't completely lose the track lines. Does that make sense? Okay, go ahead and make that happen.